So in this video, we will learn about the diagonal rule, and an important rule that can be exploited utilizing the standard reduction potential table. So first of all, you need to remember Leo Ger. Leo lose electrons oxidation. Ger gain electrons reduction. So let's take a look at two uh, elements here. So in this diagonal rule, as an example, we'll look at two half reactions. One half reaction involving F2, gaining two electrons to becoming 2F minus. And another half reaction here, but this time we're going to flip it. We'll flip it so that AU solid becomes AU plus 3 plus 3 electrons. So the association with this first half reaction in blue is positive 2.87 volts. This is a reduction half reaction. Now we flip this, and because we flip this mated oxidation, we have to flip the sign, so that becomes negative 1.50 volts. We need to cancel out the electrons of this, what we will call the reduction half reaction, also the cathode. Here is our anode our oxidation half reaction, okay? So we have an electron in our reactant side for the reduction half reaction. We have three electrons or so in our product side for the oxidation half reaction. We need to cancel out our electrons. To do that, I will multiply the first half reaction by three, and I will multiply the bottom half reaction by two. So the six electrons here will cancel out with the six electrons there. We add these two together, and we add the corresponding half reactions, and we will get our net oxidation reduction reaction of 1.37 volts. Positive voltage, that's a good thing. That means this is a battery. Okay, This can be a battery involving our couple, which is the anode salt bridge cathode couple. Here the anode would be AU solid going to AU plus 3. Salt bridge. F2 being reduced to F minus. So you can have that type of battery. It will give you or dispense a voltage of 1.37 volts. So what's shown here at the bottom is the galvanic cell notation. It goes by anode. Here's a salt bridge. Cathode. Here is the corresponding redox reaction balanced that um, corresponds to this. So these two are essentially the same thing. So what is this diagonal rule? You realize that we have a positive voltage at 1.37 volts, uh, which is, means that this is a fully functional battery, no matter how, how crude it is. But look at the positions of these in our table. So here we have F2, and here F2 is actually causing... AU solid to flip and become an oxidation reaction. And if you flip it to become an oxidation reaction, you get a positive voltage. So essentially, the, the diagonal rule is this. F2 can cause anything below it to flip and still maintain a positive voltage, still have a fully functional battery. By fully functioning battery, we're defining it as anything that yields a positive voltage. So F2 can cause anything below it on the table to flip and still be positive when you do the cathode-anode addition, canceling out the electrons. Let's take a look at iron plus 3 going to iron plus 2. That will cause everything below it to turn into an oxidation reaction, flipping it, still maintaining a positive voltage. So anything that's below it in the activity table can cause it to become oxidized, giving you a positive voltage, giving you a fully functioning battery, very, very crude number of voltage. Right, let's look at the opposite of that. Um, can So this is a reduction half reaction. Can this reduction half reaction flip anything above it? Okay, so can AU plus 3 plus 3 electrons going to AU solid flip this reaction and still maintain a positive voltage? Well, the answer is no. Okay, so if you take this reaction in red, this half reaction in red, and flip this half reaction in blue, making it oxidation, you're going to get minus 2.87 volts. Minus 2.87 volts plus 1.50 volts will give you negative voltage. So anything below it will be a positive voltage, voltage causing it to flip. 
but if you take something, it will not. It will not cause the, anything above it to flip and become an oxidation reaction. If it causes it to flip that's above it, based on its position in the standard reduction potential table, that's going to yield a negative voltage. Now, if you take something and it's below it in the standard reduction potential table, it will cause that to flip, giving a positive voltage. So that is the diagonal rule. Okay? Anything below it can cause the thing below it to flip, giving a positive voltage, causing the thing below it to be an oxidation half reaction instead of a reduction half reaction. So we can actually use the activity series, as this, is, this table is called, to determine what elements can oxidize something else versus what elements or compounds can reduce something else. So as an example, let's just take a look at these yes or no questions here. So first of all, can Au plus 3 oxidize Fe plus 2 plus Fe2, Fe plus 3? So that's the question. It's either a yes or no response. First thing you want to do here is local... Uh, localize where the half reaction is. So Au plus 3, that's right here. And can it, the question is essentially, can it oxidize Fe plus 2 to Fe plus 3? So when we say oxidize it, essentially causing this to flip, losing electrons. And since Au plus 3 is above Fe plus 2, we can expect this to flip it 1.50 minus 0.77 volts is still positive. And so the answer to this question is yes. Au plus 3 can oxidize Fe plus 2 to Fe plus 3. And in turn, Au plus 3 will get reduced to Au solid. So the answer to this first question is just a, a resounding yes. We will get a positive voltage. Okay, how about PBSO4? Uh, can it oxidize zinc solid to zinc plus 2? In the preceding example, very similarly, uh, similarly, uh, PBSO4 is here. It's asking us, can, zinc, can that take zinc solid and oxidize it to zinc plus 2? Minus 0.31 volts, uh, flip that, positive 0.76 volts, still yields a positive voltage. So the answer to this question is yes. So PBSO4 can oxidize zinc solid to zinc plus 2. In turn, that PBSO4 gets reduced to PB solid and sulfate ion. Let's do our, our next question here. Uh, can manganese solid oxidize zinc solid to zinc plus 2? So looking at our uh, table here and identifying the cathode-anode pair, the question here is, can manganese solid oxidize flip zinc solid to zinc plus 2. Well, when it flips zinc solid to zinc plus 2, that becomes positive 0.76 minus 1.18 uh, plus a negative 0.76 is still negative. The answer to this question is no. Uh, what you can say legally is that zinc plus 2 can oxidize manganese solid to Mn plus 2, but you cannot say manganese solid can, ox can um, oxidize zinc solid to zinc plus 2. So that is wrong. All right, how about we do the reverse here? Can manganese solid reduce zinc plus 2 to zinc solid? Right? So reduction here, zinc plus 2 to zinc solid, reduction is minus 0.76. Manganese gets oxidized to Mn plus 2, so positive 1.18 plus a minus 0.76, the answer to this question is yes. So uh, manganese can reduce zinc plus 2 to zinc solid. Equivalently, you can say zinc plus 2 can oxidize MnS solid to Mn plus 2. So the answer to this question is yes. So let's go on to our next question here. Um, question is, can OH minus hydroxide ion located here, oxidize Cr plus 3, located here, to Cr207 dichromate. Um, actually, uh, the opposite is true. Cr plus 3 can um, oxidize OH minus to O2 gas, cannot do the opposite. So you see, this is asking, can OH minus flip this reaction, causing Cr plus 3 to go to dichromate? Flipping this gives it minus 1.33 volts and plus 0 0.40 volts uh, minus the 1.33 volts still gives you a negative, can't have negative voltage. The answer is no to this one. All right, can copper oxidize SN tin to SN plus 2? 
First thing is we got to find our species. So here I find copper plus two. Can it oxidize SN solid to SN plus two? So this is a classic example of the diagonal rule. The answer is yes. So positive 0.34 volts can flip this into positive 0.14 volts. You'll still get a positive voltage when you add them together. The answer to this question in our yes or no uh, response is definitely yes. How about this one here? Can copper 2 oxidize Cl minus to Cl2 gas? So identify our species here, copper plus 2. Um, can it flip Cl minus to Cl2 gas? In turn, that copper plus 2 becomes copper solid. Uh, the answer is no, right? Uh, what we can say is that Cl2 gas can cause copper solid to be oxidized to Cu plus 2, but we cannot say the reverse. Um, you see this going up and flipping that, converting it to an oxidation half reaction will make this a negative 1.36 volts. Negative 1.36 volts with positive 0.34 volts is negative. The answer to, to this is no. Let's look at one more here. Um, so, and Ce plus 3 cesium reduce Co plus 3 to Co plus 2 cobalt. So here's Ce plus 3. Uh, can it cause this to be reduced, Co plus 3 to Co plus 2? The answer is yes. So when this gets reduced, that's 1.82 volts. This is going to get oxidized. That's minus 1.61 volts. So 1.82 minus a 1.61 is still positive. The answer is yes. So Basically, and this is where the confusion comes in, you can say CO plus 3, cobalt plus 3, causes the oxidation of cesium plus 3 to cesium plus 4. Equivalently, you can say cesium plus 3 causes the reduction of cobalt 3 to cobalt plus 2. So I hope you realize that it's anonymous, uh, synonymous. So the answer to this is yes. So our last question is, can cesium plus 4 oxidize I minus to I2 solid, 1.61 volts. Um, this gets flipped to minus 0.53 volts, 1.61 volts minus 0.53 volts is still positive. So the answer to this question is yes. In essence, we can say cesium plus four can oxidize I minus to I2 solid. We can also say equivalently that I minus can reduce cesium plus 4 to cesium plus 3. In turn, I minus gets oxidized to I2 minus. So those are two synonymous statements.